Are you looking to scale your property portfolio? Do you want to grow your property portfolio with minimal risk? Then this video is perfect for you. So in this video, I discuss two strategies on how you can scale a property portfolio. However, I'll be discussing in detail one particular strategy that I'm hugely fond of and has generated me substantial returns. Now I'll be talking about why I prefer this particular strategy, but most importantly, why I believe in my opinion, this strategy is the safest one to grow and scale property portfolio. So if you are looking to up your property game and take that to the next level, but to do so with minimal risk and not overexposing yourself, please consider watching this video all the way through to the very end. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Marco. I'm a portfolio landlord, property investor, developer, and mentor. And I'm incredibly passionate about helping individuals and companies invest in residential property. Now, before we get into this video, hallelujah, we have a running aeroplane. I can't believe it at last. For those of you that have been following the channel will know that we have a new engine in the aeroplane and it's taken several months from ordering the engine to getting it shipped over to the UK to installing and testing it but finally we have a running aeroplane so thank you to all those involved in putting that engine together and getting the aircraft running and you'll be joining me in the cockpit very shortly on an upcoming video right so let's get into the main topic of today and in my opinion there's two ways how to scale your property portfolio to the next level and two basic concepts to understand and let me just describe them so the first is to go bigger and what I mean here is, let's say you've been used to buying single buy to let properties, maybe they're one, two, three bed houses, something like that. Well, let's think about doing something bigger. You know, can we get a block of flats? Can we get, you know, a larger commercial premises? What I'm trying to say is we can go bigger. That's number one. Number two, the other strategy we can conduct is actually to do more of the same and grow in a quantity type of way. So what I mean here is, right, well, let's just double down on these single buy to lets. Let's keep buying them. Let's keep buying them at volume and use this volume to scale to that next level. Level. Now, there's no right or wrong between each concept and between each idea. I know investors who have done both. I know investors who have gone bigger and it's worked out really well for them. However, I know a fair share of investors who have gone bigger and they failed. Not only have they failed, they failed hugely because the risks, in my opinion anyway, are far larger if you're going for bigger types of properties. These are types of properties that maybe you don't have experience with and as a result, there are unknown risks. So not only have I seen some of these investors struggle financially, but the sheer stress it's causing them is unbelievable. Believable. So this is why I'm personally a fan of doing more of the same. How can we grow our portfolio in a similar manner, increasing the number of units we hold, doing the thing we know that works and doing the thing that is repeatable and we have experience with. So let's discuss in detail how can we do this? How can we scale our property portfolio to the next level just by doing more of the same? Now, if you are enjoying this video, please do consider hitting that like button because if you hit that like button, YouTube will push this video out to other like-minded individuals and hopefully Hopefully, fingers crossed, they can get the value from this video that you're getting here today. So let's discuss how we can grow our portfolio using this strategy. So no matter what strategy you're really undertaking, it could be the buy to let strategy, the HMO strategy, whatever it is, you can simply double down on that strategy. Right, so you know, can we buy more buy to lets with our existing capital rather than say going for something huge, a block of flats or a large commercial premises? It's quite easy and simple to do. Now what you could also do is buy a portfolio and within that portfolio, maybe there are a handful of buy to lets. Essentially, you're just buying more of the same, but at volume. And hopefully, if you're buying at volume, you'll be getting a discount as well. So this is how we can essentially do more of the same and fast track and scale our portfolio just by doing the things we already do. By doing this, we'll end up with a higher number of individual dwellings compared to, say, a handful of larger properties. So Marco, why should we do this? Why should we keep doing what we're doing and buy in larger quantities rather than go for that larger property? Here's why. I'm going to go into the list of the reasons. First of all, it allows us to scale with minimal risk, in my opinion. Second of all, this is a proven strategy. This strategy has delivered you returns. It's working well for you. So why not double down on it? Third of all, this focuses on your experience and potentially your strengths as well. Fourth, there's little new knowledge or little training required to do more of the same. Whereas if you're going for something a little bit more complex, there's a lot you need to do to upskill yourself. Five is most of the risks are known. Again, it's a proven strategy. You've already got experience doing and undergoing this strategy. Most of the risks are known to you. Whereas if you're doing something new on a larger scale, there's a famous saying, you don't know what you don't know. And this really can bite hard. Number six is all of this means that if you're doing more of the same and you're buying in quantity, this takes less time. Everything that I've just mentioned takes less time. You're comfortable with the strategy. You have experience with it. And as a result, you're deploying your time more effectively. Now let's get to one of the main points in the video where I detail and discuss and explain why, in my opinion, this strategy is less 
risk and it's a safer bet for you when it comes to scaling your property portfolio. So here's the magic. Doing this will generate strong diversification. So a single property in your portfolio will have a smaller weighting over your entire property portfolio. So for example, let's make the math really easy and go over an example together. Let's say you do as I'm suggesting and you're buying more of the same. And let's say you amass a portfolio of 20 properties, right? So 20, you know, one, two, three bed, buy to let, typical properties, right? So one in those 20 properties will represent a 5% of your property portfolio, right? That's that's all well and good. So maybe let's say you go for the other strategy where you're buying bigger property. Now this bigger property could easily account for 20, 30, 40% of your whole property portfolio. And in my opinion, that's a huge risk you have there to have a single property take up such a large percentage of your portfolio. So this is why I like doing more of the same because if anything happens with one property out of those 20s, it really doesn't affect your figures. You are strongly diversified so you can afford for things to go wrong. Whereas something goes wrong over here at your property that say has one third weighting of your entire portfolio, well, all of a sudden you're going to feel that bite. Now here's the thing, we can be well diversified within these 20 properties over here. Yes, they could be all single buy to let property, but there's so many ways we can diversify within this idea itself. So for example, we can be buying a different properties with a different number of bedrooms. We can be buying different types of properties. So, you know, terraced, semi-detached, bungalows, things of that nature. We can also be buying in different locations. So all these variables helps to further diversify these properties over here. And again, if something goes wrong in one area or if something goes wrong with one particular type of property, in theory, it shouldn't really have huge ramifications for the whole of your portfolio. So what I'm trying to say is you can diversify without needing to go bigger, without needing to buy bigger and different properties. You can diversify within the proven strategies that you're undergoing at the moment. Now, what's the benefit of diversification? Well, don't take my word for it. Some really smart guy at Harvard Business School has done a study on it. And a diversified portfolio generates better returns than one that is not diversified. So again, this is one reason why you want to have a diversified portfolio. Do not put all your eggs in one basket. Don't be investing 100% in flats in a particular area. Things could go wrong. Have a nice diversified property, diversified by property types, locations, bedrooms, and things of that nature. So a question that I may get asked is, Marco, well, you know, you have a book of flights, you have some larger property. Why have you decided to undergo that strategy when you're telling me to buy in quantity? Well, it all comes down to risk versus rewards. With my block of flats that I purchased, I deemed the rewards potentially far higher than the risk incurred. And not only was I right, I'd underestimated the profitability of this deal. And it worked out to be an absolutely incredible deal. However, owning a block of flats definitely isn't for everyone. It comes with its own unique complications and issues. However, if you really want to scale a property portfolio with minimal risk, and you really want to conserve that capital and the equity you have within your portfolio, then I would suggest doing more of the same rather than moving into the unknown, moving into the bigger properties that take up a larger percentage of your portfolio. So there you have it. Consider scaling your property portfolio by buying more of the same, by buying in quantity. And I've had really good success and still do to this day. I'm happy to just pick up a single buy select property. That's fine. Now don't get me wrong. I prefer to buy a portfolio where there are a handful of buy to let properties within the portfolio. And hopefully I'm getting it at a discount, which is even better because there is break up value there. However, I do this now and I still do this to this day. And going forward, I will still be doing this. So what I'm trying to say is it's worked very well for me and I would strongly consider doing this rather than going to that next level and maybe, maybe just getting burnt. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to be a downer. If you want to go on to the next thing, that's absolutely great. And I, you know, I'd love to encourage it, but you don't need to. If your aim is just to have a certain amount of income or to build a certain portfolio to a, you know, however many millions or hundred thousands, you can do this simply just by picking up units, by picking up quantity, by picking up single buy to let property. You don't have to buy that 15 bed HMO. You don't have to buy that huge commercial property. You don't have to buy a block of flats. You can simply do it playing at the lower end of the market that you feel comfortable with and is very easy to learn and scale. Do you have any questions? I'm sure I'm going to get loads of great questions on this video. So please do post below. And as you know, I personally respond to all questions on the channel. So what to watch next? Well, here's a video you may enjoy, a video published a couple of months ago, which is if I had to start from scratch again, here are 10 property tips that I would implement to get my portfolio going. So consider watching the video. It'll be somewhere above my hand or my head. I really hope you enjoy it. And I'm wishing you all the very best in your property investing week. Goodbye.